and this week we'll be going over more detailed 2D sketching tools and practices. Click on the line function up here, or L on your keyboard, to start sketching a line. When you move the cursor from the original point, the length of the line will appear and you can type in a specific value while you are sketching. This is true for the dimensions of any shapes during sketch mode. To draw an arc, click on a point and drag from that point. Note that the default arc when you are sketching in line mode will be a center point arc, but there are also three point arcs and tangent arcs. To access these different arcs, we're going to go into the create menu and under arc, select three point arc. The center arc, which is what we drew by dragging a line, only includes two points to build an arc. The three point arc includes three points where you choose both endpoints and where you want the curve of the arc to end. When a tangent arc is selected, by choosing a line or other shape, any arc that you draw from that shape will be tangent to the point or line that you selected. Just like there are different types of arcs that we can draw, there are also different types of other shapes. For example, in the menu here, or by clicking R on our keyboard, we can draw a two-point rectangle by default. But going into the Create menu, we can also create a three-point rectangle to determine length and width to exact measurements. or a center rectangle, where we first choose the center point and then the corner points from there. In the case of circles, we can click here or C on our keyboard to start drawing a center diameter circle, which is the default, by clicking a center point and then specifying the length of our diameter. We can also choose a two-point circle which will ask to specify both ends of the diameter and a three-point circle, which will require three different points to determine the size and location of the circle you are sketching. We can also use tangent circles, and I've set up a few different lines here to demonstrate. With a two-tangent circle, you can click on two different lines that you want the circle you are sketching to be tangent to, and then choose the position that you want the circle to be. The same thing applies for a three tangent circle, except with three lines or shapes that are tangent instead of two. We also have two different types of splines. Fit point splines are the default for the spline function and create custom splines based on selected points. Start by selecting one point and then selecting a few others to create the desired shape. To finish a spline, either close it so that it is a complete shape or click on the check button once it is mounted over. Once you finish a spline, several points will appear there outside of it that can be used to adjust the different curves or overall size. In the Create menu, there are also Control Point Splines. In Control Point Splines, the curves of the splines are controlled by the outside points instead of the turning points of the splines themselves. The same applies for the fit and control point splines that when you are done with the spline, to mouse over the green check mark and click on it to finish the shape. We can use the polygon tool for different methods to draw equilateral shapes. We can use a circumscribe polygon to determine the overall 
size of the shape and specify how many sides you want it to have. The inscribed polygon uses a similar method. And the edge polygon determines the size of one side of the shape first. And then how many sides you want the shape to have. For ellipses, first select the center point. Then determine the point to establish the first axis, and the third point is to determine the size or width of the ellipses. There are several different types of slots that I'll demonstrate quickly that can be helpful when sketching. The first is a center to center spot, where you determine the two center points on each end, and then the size of the slot. And there is the overall slot, where you determine the end-to-end -end points, and then the width of the slot. Then the center point slot, where you specify one center point and create the slot around that. And then there are our arc slots using three points. Or first specifying a center point the distance to the slot, on one end, and then the other point. The last sketching shape that we will go over are conic curves. These can be elliptical, parabolic, or hyperbolic, depending on how you draw them. Place one point, and then the second point, to determine the width of the conic curve and then where you want the curve to be. After you sketch it, you can also adjust where this point should end and how parabolic it should be. To show the dimensions of any sketch, click on the Dimension Sketch, or D, on your keyboard. Then select the part of the sketch that you want to show the dimension for. Once you have drawn the dimension line, you can change the dimensions of the sketch by typing in a new value. You can also do the same thing for different shapes. To show the diameter of a circle, and change the measurements. Similar in function to a symmetry constraint, the mirroring tool here allows you to ensure elements of a sketch are symmetrical by reflecting over a line. First, draw a line that you want to reflect over and make it a construction line by clicking on this right here. I'm going to select the midpoint and you can see that the line, instead of being solid like a normal line to build a shape, is dotted, which means it will not be part of any shape in your final sketch. Now I'm going to click the mirror tool, and I like to select the mirror line first so I don't get confused, and then select the object that I want to mirror over that line. And you can see that there is already a mock-up of what is that going what that is going to look like. All you have to do is click OK, and now you have two identical shapes that are symmetrical over the line you have specified. The fillet tool here can be used to replace corners with arcs tangent to any two intersecting lines. Once it is selected, select the first line,
and then select the second line. And you can adjust the radius of the arc by dragging or by specifying an exact radius. The same goes for intersecting lines like this or intersecting arcs. The trim tool is used to remove smaller sections or specific lines of the sketch. This can be particularly useful when working with curves, circles, and arcs that overlap other shapes like we have here. Once it is selected, just click on the lines that you want to remove, and now you have one cohesive shape without any significant overlapping lines. When you select the shape when the offset tool is in use, you can create an identical shape inside or outside of the selected shape so that they share a center and the spacing between the two shapes is evenly distributed. You can also specify the size difference from the original shape. Once you press OK, now we're going to go over some constraints. The equal constraint, which can be found in the constraint menu here, is used to make two shapes equal in size. I'm going to draw a circle that is 100 millimeters in diameter. I'm going to draw a second circle nearby that's a random size. If I want these two circles to be the exact same size, I can click on the equal constraint, the parent sketch, and second circle, so that now they are both 100 millimeters in diameter. If I were to change the diameter of this circle, it would also be applied to the second circle or any other circles in the future that I decided to apply the constraint to. Select the tangent function and then align along with an arc or circle to join the two entities at that point. When any of these objects are moved or resized, the tangent function will remain in effect, making the appropriate adjustments to the other entities. While it is true that while you are drawing a line, there is usually a guide that shows you how these lines are parallel, you can also do this artificially by applying a parallel constraint. Select the parallel constraint followed by the lines or shapes that you want to make parallel in order to apply it. The same goes for the perpendicular constraint. Apply the lines or shapes that you want to make perpendicular, and the constraint will make the lines perpendicular regardless of how they were drawn. The fix-unfix constraint can lock sketches or parts of sketches in place and then remove that lock so that when a sketch is moved around, that part of the sketch that has the constraint will be locked in place. You can use extrusion, which was covered in last week, to cut into objects. Select the shape, or plane, in this case we'll select the top of the shape, that you want a hole to appear in and I want a cylindrical hole through the center here. Now that I have drawn that shape, I'm going to click on it, click extrude, and instead of going upwards, which will just add on to the shape, I'm going to use negative values to cut into it. The menu here, you can choose to join the two shapes, which will just add on to the shape, intersect them, create a new body or component, but to cut into shapes, select the cut operation, and then OK. And now the center of our square is hollow. Even once holes are made, you can still move them around to adjust where the hole appears in the original shape. 
Once we have our 3D shape, we can create multi-view 2D drawings. By clicking File, New Drawing, from Design, I'm going to click OK and keep all of these the same since it is our first sketch. And a new window will appear with the shape following your cursor. I'm going to select this as my base view, but you can also adjust them. Actually, I'm going to change to the top view to be the base view. And click to set it. You can also change these different settings to adjust how the drawing is going to be portrayed by clicking on projected view. From the base view, we can do different top views and isometric views from multiple sides. We can also add dimensions to any of the different views by clicking D on the keyboard or the dimensions tool up here. This concludes this week's video on sketching and editing 2D shapes, sketching tools, and constraints. If you have any questions, Save them for your teacher during the live demo.